is 1976. The American merchant vessel Petrox Explorer has just set sail from the port of Surabaya in search of oil. What they find will shock the world. We may be sailing into the history books. They will discover an uncharted island that is the home of the most incredible creature on the face of the earth. Dino De Laurentiis presents... Yes, friends, it's once again Schlocktober, the time of year when I put all other things on hold to bring you a month of obscure and or bizarre horror and monster movies because I want to, alright? And this year we kick off with arguably the king of movie monsters, Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. 1933's King Kong didn't necessarily start the 20th century's obsession with monster apes, but it definitely solidified it and turned Great Big Monkey into the referential touchstone of movie monsters for decades to come. There was a sequel, there were successors, there were rip-offs, but it wasn't until 1976 that someone just up and remade the thing. So goes the story, infamous Italian mega-producer Dino De Laurentiis had become fixated on topping Steven Spielberg's history-making hit Jaws, and somehow he concluded that the way to conquer the newest movie monster was to revive the most famous one, so he set about securing the remake rights to King Kong. What followed was one of the most notoriously bloated, out-of-control, gossip-fueled productions in Hollywood history. De Laurentiis and company went all out in grand 70s disaster movie fashion with a big cast, opulent sets, and an army of lawyers on a mission to enforce Universal Pictures' dubious claim to own the copyright to any associations of the name Kong with depictions of gorillas. Funny side note to that, Universal would ultimately lose that argument legally in 1982 when they sued the upstart American arm of a then-little-known Japanese outfit called Nintendo for calling their new arcade game Donkey Kong. The American lawyer who successfully argued the case for Nintendo was rewarded with a $30,000 sailboat named Donkey Kong and exclusive worldwide rights to put that name on any other sailboats he might wish to own in the future. That lawyer's name was Kirby. No, seriously, the guy's name was really John Kirby, and a lot of people think that's who this Kirby was named after. Anyway, the King Kong production is best remembered for its colossal publicity campaign based around a whopper of a claim, that this new Kong would be portrayed not by an animated figure like the original, but by a life-sized Kong robot. Now that is how you get some butts in seats. Hey guys, we actually built a 50-foot gorilla. Come and watch it f*** up New York City. Unfortunately, they were kinda sorta playing fast and loose with a little white fib of... They were lying, pretty much. The giant mechanical Kong was really only built for a couple of stationary shots, barely functioned, and looked kinda terrible. The vast majority of Kong's performance is just rising star FX whiz Rick Baker stomping around in what is not one of his better gorilla suits on miniature sets, and the audience could pretty much tell. The film was still kind of a hit, but it quickly became more well-remembered for the giant robot debacle, the publicity, and De Laurentiis' hyperbolic self-promotion. Some were expecting it to kick off renewed interest in the then-flagging giant monster genre, but outside some overseas cheapies, produced to cash in on the hype like China's Mighty Peking Man, Korea's Ape, aka Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla, and Italy's Yeti Giant of the 20th Century, it didn't really pan out that way. At the time, even Kong's one-time rival Godzilla was on his last legs, though in a final irony, the US posters for his then-swan song Godzilla vs. Megalon aimed to cash in on the new Kong by depicting its monsters also fighting atop the... eh. Oh yeah, there's also that. One of the reasons you don't see this movie or its original poster around all that much lately is that since they'd opted to move the story to the present, it was decided that instead of recreating the Empire State Building scene from the original, the new Kong would climb the relatively new World Trade Center towers. And yeah, the whole big shootout helicopter fight just isn't as much fun to watch anymore. So that happened. To be frank, the movie just isn't very good. It's trying to be a big airport-style disaster movie with all the characters and human drama, but they're all so dull and underwritten, it feels like an eternity until Kong shows up. Also, they opted not to try creating any dinosaurs for this version. Instead of a Tyrannosaur, Kong just fights a snake, which means there's nothing else interesting for anyone to do on that island other than keep looking for Kong. You might be wondering why I chose to lead Schlocktober off with a mediocre movie I don't much care for. Well, it's because that backstory is kind of interesting, firstly, but mainly because I needed it as background context for our next two movies. Come back next week and find out what they are. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. <laughs> <laughs>